Hello, Janice. Hello, Anthony. Today, we're going to talk about how to name a bank as your executor. So if you're considering professional executors, maybe you're interested in an institutional executor, such as a bank or trust company versus an attorney. So here's what you need to do, and we'll cover that today. Today, we will discuss the application, minimum requirements, wills versus trust, and then custom, albeit higher, fees. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the application. So one of the things that you need to be aware of if you're going to dis- if you are interested in an institutional professional uh, executor is that just like with everything else, when you're dealing with a bank or financial institution, there's going to be an application process. <laughs> and, you know, that can be off-putting for some people. Like, um, you know, you're, you're asking this institution to be your, you know, this very intimate role for you, your, your executor. And they're saying, you know, what's your credit score? <laughs> right, right. Or, you know, I need three forms of ID. So it can feel a little... Um, Impersonal, maybe? Impersonal, a little bureaucratic. Yeah. And sometimes there's even a qualification process. It kind of, it, it might even feel like you're applying to college or to, right. as a New Yorker, <laughs> to a private school for your kid or something like that. Right. <laughs> Where you're like almost asking for permission to let them be your executor. And that, that definitely can, it can definitely feel that way. So just understand that it's, you know, it's a process. It can feel like an application and it can feel like you're almost, you know, you know, you're asking for, for them right. to, to deign to be your executor. <laughs> right, right. All right, minimum requirements. And here's what I mean by whether or not they'll accept you as an as a, as a executor client. Um, the lowest I've ever seen is $1 million liquid invested with the bank, meaning you, know, you, could, you could be a multimillionaire, but if it's all real estate and you don't have a lo- much cash or if you don't have cash with that particular financial institution, they're often not interested right? Wow. Um, and the reason is hopefully self, self apparent or self, self explanatory. They make their money by having you as a customer, as well as being your executor. It's almost like being your executor is a way to get other business from you. Yeah. <laughs> right. And they're not going to do this for free. Definitely not. Which yeah. we'll get into later about oh, yeah. customized yeah. fees, custom. Uh, custom. <laughs> but yeah, the 1 million uh, limit is actually, that's the lowest I've ever seen for for the larger banks. It's usually more like two, maybe even 5 million. And um, a lot of folks just don't have that much liquid, let alone that much liquid with one institution. I mean, if you do, great. But um, just under- understand there's um, there's 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 limits like that. And then, it, you know, you just understand you really can't change your bank after that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Kind so of. you're kind and- of marrying yourself to that particular institution. Right. So Joe Regular with a normal size investment at their bank probably wouldn't qualify for any of this. I mean, unless you have, like you said, that two to five million. And we did have a family trust, which was with, I'll just say it, they were with Chase. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And and yeah, they had several million invested with uh, Chase, but they were unhappy with how how the investments were performing because a lot, I mean, look, Chase invested in a lot of Chase products. That's kind of how the game works. Right. And they did, they weren't happy about all the different fees and rips that were coming out of that investment. So they asked to change them. And guess what? Chase was like, that's cool. Um, by the way, sign these documents because we're resigning as your trustee. Because <laughs> like, they, they're not interested in the trustee no. business. They're interested in that as a sort of ancillary service to other products and sales. Yeah. Right. The, bot- the bottom line is they want to make money. Yeah. It is what it is, right? Yeah. As long as you go in knowing that, then that's fine. <laughs> or right. it, can, it can be. Yeah. All right, let's talk about wills versus trusts. Apparently, some institutions only want to be your trustee. They do not, uh, uh, the, tr- the trustee of your trust, and they will not accept an appointment as executor of your will. And there's a reason for that. Uh, trustee is more of an ongoing financial relationship. Uh, which kind of suits banks a little better. Being an executor can be messy. You know, you cannot, you kind of have to roll up your sleeves and clean out an apartment or uh, deal with heirs or uh, sell a car, you know, take it to the DMV and return the plate. So there's stuff that needs to be done. Right. Can right. you imagine, you know, that the, 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 the suspended guy from your mega bank doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Showing up to get rid of your, yeah, I don't know about that. So it's, Paying your last medical. Yeah. Well, yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a different um, type of relationship. Not always, but for the most part. 
And for that reason, um, apparently, for example, Vanguard, or which you know, I'm a big big fan of Vanguard and, and John Bogle, but uh, apparently they do not accept executor appointments. And this is not official policy. This is uh, anecdotal from from some calls I've gotten from clients, right. and they will only be your trustee. So, I mean, that's their rule. That's their policy. I can kind of see where they're coming from with that if they want to look at the at the bottom line and what's involved with being an executor. Yeah, they just might, they may just simply not be built out for that, which is this is fun. Yeah. It's just not their business. All right. Lastly, when you decide to work with a bank as your executor, be prepared for custom, meaning higher <laughs> fees. Uh, so most states or many states, such as New York, has a statutory uh, fee schedule for anyone serving as an executor or trustee. But if everyone agrees, you can sort of opt out of that for lower or higher fees. And banks invariable, invariably... Um, you know, as a condition for serving as your executor, will have a custom fee schedule different from the one that's set by state law. And duh, it's usually higher. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> but just make sure you understand that. I mean, you you may look based on your situation, you may think all of the things I described are are good and it's worth what you're getting. And what you're getting is you're getting essentially immortality. You're getting an institution that will not cease to exist. Even if it goes bankrupt or gets acquired, there will be a successor bank. I mean... Um, Manufacturers Hanover is now J.P. Morgan Chase. Right, it'll it'll exist in one form or another. So you're getting that sort of immortality, and you know if you have enough money, the banks know how to treat you right. They get you the ticket. Oh yeah. They get you the fine dining. <laughs> oh yes, they'll they'll make you yes, they will keep you happy and be very nice. So there's a lot of pros. I um, just want to make sure that you understand, um, you know, the process and if it's right for you. And that's why we've gone over this today about how to name a bank as your executor. Absolutely. It's all about knowledge. Honestly, when you're going to make these decisions, you just have to know and be armed with the knowledge before you just decide, sure, I'll pick, you know, whatever. Um, if you want to learn more about this uh, executor concept, uh, check out Anthony's book, How to Hire an Executor, available on Amazon. Definitely digs way deeper into what we talked about today, among um, many other things. Very good. Thank you, Janice, as always. And we will uh, thank you all for listening. And we'll talk to you again soon next time. Bye now. Talk soon.